Right, so this is Siding Spring Observatory. We're on top of Mount Wirrat in the Warrumbungal National Park, about 27 kilometres west of Coonabarabran in western New South Wales. Okay, so this is the ANU's 2.3 metre ATT, stands for Advanced Technology Telescope. It was built in 1984, it was opened by the then Prime Minister Bob Hawke. Now when it was first built in the 1980s, being called the Advanced Technology Telescope, it had a number of features that made it revolutionary. The first thing of course, it's in a square building. The first thing I point out to people is even though it's a square building, we're actually standing on a circular skirt here. It is like a lazy Susan. So the whole building rotates, 320 odd tons of building rotate on basically a railway track underneath us. So I say to, the, say to the kids when we bring them in that now we're moving and they say, no, we're not. And I said, well, turn around and have a look. I uh, have loved astronomy since I was four years old. However, as I went through school, uh, I had a little trouble. And in fact, when teachers asked me what I wanted to do when I left school and I told them I wanted to do astronomy, I was, uh, I was told not to bother. And to be honest with you, I wasn't a great student at school. So I ended up leaving school early and joined the Air Force. Uh, and did electronics in the Air Force and actually pursued uh, an engineering degree. I spent about nine years in the Air Force uh, working on aircraft, which was fun, which was great fun, uh, but thought once I left, I thought, bugger this, I want to do astronomy. I'm Peter Small, I work for the ANU, the Australian National University, as technical support. Well, my background is mechanical, so I provide mechanical to support because there's a lot of things that are moving. There's a lot of uh, stuff connected to other equipment, so basically it's to, to provide additional support with the electronic guys. My background is uh, a trade, um, a trade background of uh, heavy vehicle mechanics, which I did my trade through the military um, and spent 10 years there and then moved to mining and spent four years there and then the opportunity came up here. It wasn't quite the job that they were asking for, uh, the role, uh, but the way, because of the way I presented myself and, and what my skill set that I could bring, I uh, was put at the top of the list. Don't see yourself as limited just because your trade says you're a truck mechanic or you're a vehicle mechanic, that's where you need to end up. Your skill set can be used in a lot of different industries and so it never hurts to put your hand up and have a go and, um, and constantly push yourself. Just because this is an astronomy university background environment doesn't mean you as a trade can't get involved in that and that, that translates to all industries. So never limit yourself to just what you think that one single trade can do because you'd be surprised where you could end up. Alright, so this is the AAT, the Anglo-Australian Telescope. This is actually Australia's largest optical telescope. It's 3.9 metres in diameter. Uh, it's run by the Australian Astronomical Observatory, whose uh, head office is down in Sydney. Um, and as you can see, behind me here, it's, it's quite a massive piece of equipment. So sometimes I would like to say um, that I'm a kind of uh, professional astronomer but with an amateur astronomer soul. Because since I have memory, I just, I wanted to be an astronomer. I wanted to know more things about the stars and planets and galaxies. Photography in general, it is uh, another hobby that, uh, that I have, and I really enjoy it. Yes, definitely. Yeah, that was actually the way I was introduced into photography, because I wanted to do astrophotography. But to do astrophotography, first you have to learn the techniques. Of, of photography in general and how 
good photos are taken. This machine was actually built to weigh the universe and uh, we've already done that. So that was fairly easy, so now they're using it for things like galactic archaeology, finding out how galaxies form and other research projects. When we look way into the distance at the edge of the universe, we find galaxies that only have helium, hydrogen and a little bit of lithium in them. What stars do is bang little atoms together to make big atoms, it's called atomic fusion. So the first stars started out burning hydrogen into helium. When they ran out of hydrogen as a fuel, they collapsed, got hotter and started burning helium. They worked their way up through the chain, and our star, for instance, can make carbon and oxygen. A really big star can make things like iron. A really big star, when it explodes, makes the heavy elements like um, gold and uranium. But what that comes down to is that every atom in your body had to be generated inside a star. The only way you can be here is if you've all parts of you were at some point in a star, and probably a couple of stars, and probably a giant exploding star, and that star had to explode then re-coalesce into a dust cloud and form a new um, solar system. The sun started burning, the leftover parts making the sun became the planets, and the leftover parts of the planets are us. So we're literally made out of stardust.